Is your vision giving you cause for concern? Have you had several surgeries or eye injections in the past? Are you using eye drops? Are prescription glasses working for you? If you answered yes to any of these questions, tune in to get pertinent information from me, Lady Day, and Dr. Prince, a low vision and blind rehabilitation specialist. We are live on the PCVI network to give education, information, and other solutions. Remember to subscribe to our network to get notifications. Good evening, you are watching PCVI Network, and I am your host for the evening, Lady Nay. This is Healthy Vision, and on this show we talk about all things that are pertaining to your eyes, how to protect your sight, or if you may have lost your sight, we give you information about things that can help you, services, different methodologies, of still managing and functioning in this world. So, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching. We're going to ask for you to share the show with your friends and with your loved ones. And I'd also like to welcome Dr. Prince. Good evening, Dr. Prince. Good evening, Lidine, and good evening to everyone, if, wherever you are watching the show tonight. Mm -hmm. So, I'm so happy to be here yet another week and another month now we're in the month of december and every month there's something that we can focus on in terms of the medical field in terms of vision and eye safety and eye care so from what i understand last week <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you um gave an introduction of all the things that they're going to talk about that, that we can focus on in december but I'm just going to just quickly emphasize that while the parents are getting ready to give their children all these wonderful toys and gifts for Christmas, the parents are saying, um, you know, how much is this going to cost me? Where do I have to go? Where can I find these things? And the kids are saying, mommy, mommy, I want this. I want that. Get me, get me, give me. Right? The parents have to keep in mind that certain toys can be dangerous to the vision of their children. So you have to make sure that you do your research, show your children how to use these toys and these different apparatus and even the technology. There are a lot of toys that are connected and linked with technology that may or may not have an impact on your child's health. But especially when it comes to technology, make sure that you give your children limits boundaries and don't let them just stay on these electronic devices for hours and hours and hours on end you know i know parents need a break <laughs> and they need some peace and quiet and when these kids are on these things it is very quiet but that's not the only way to get your kids minds occupied you know there are a lot of different alternatives so please keep in mind your children's vision when you're taking into account what type of toys and things that you're going to, to get, right? Yes, you see what you're missing. Uh, I see now why everyone was asking for Lady Nay. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of, a lot of our PCVI friends that watch in Healthy Vision was asking, where is Lady Nay? <laughs> because, uh, well, uh, just to let you know, uh, as we talked about it last, uh, last Tuesday, but uh, this month, December, is is called a safety toy, a celebration month, like mm -hmm. as you said. But it's not only for kids, it's for anyone because everyone share, share gift together. Yeah. And I believe some of you may decide to give an iPad to one of your parents. Some of you may decide to give a computer to your parent or a cell phone, any app. Now, remember what, I, what we always say to you, make sure even if you have this type of device, they have when you using using them make sure if, if you have an iphone in the iphone in the setting there is what they call the blue filter make sure you go and put on blue filter because we don't want the blue light because blue light whatever because there is two type of blue light there is one 
and that's good for the eye. The, it's called the blue light eye e us, but it's a French word. Now, that helps you with sleeping. But there is one that can damage the eye, what they call the blue violet light. You know, this one will, um, you need to have protection. That's why you see most of the school for kids that wear computer or for kids that use a smart computer, they, when they have glasses, they always have blue lights on it. Like you see my glasses as I'm, as I'm wearing and it seems like lazy. We have blue light protection because research already proved what's, com what's coming in the next, in, in, in 2030. You know, so many people will have vision issue related to those e all these electronic device mm -hmm. but we don't want that happen to you as you can see a lot of university already doing a lot of research to see how they can face what's coming in mm -hmm. but we are ahead of a uh, you know doing the early day season like the same way a um, like american academy of ophthalmologists uh, said they don't want uh, this celebration to turn to turn to a tragic moment because even if you're going to open a champagne you know, oh, consider yeah. the safety oh, aspect. Definitely. Don't let it spell yeah. in your face. I, yeah. I may think a lot of people may say to us, yeah. what are you talking? We've been celebrated for all year. Mm -hmm. But this morning I was watching one of the show on Channel 7 and Tama a show that was showing even some of the kids that in campus that doesn't come home. You know, a lot of them, mm -hmm. you know, when they celebrate mm -hmm. this type of situation, they overdrink. Mm -hmm. You know, there is at least one of two cases that kids that, that die. Oh, that's you know, stuff worse. like that. We don't want this type of situation. That's why uh, even we focus on vision. We want to advise you. There is a lot of good toy if you want to buy. I want to IT you can show you some of the toy. We did show them last time. But Lady Nay is, is here with you. Yeah. <laughs> this and time. I got to share with my people. So <laughs> yeah. And sure. this type of toy, even if you can get them for your kids, they can help them improve the, a, a, the fine motor skills, some of them, mm -hmm. improve uh, the, uh, the knowledge, you know, uh, the brains, uh, whatever aspect of development that may be limited, you make a, they can improve them. Mm -hmm. Because I can see a lot of, uh, uh, there is something you can look at too, uh, there is some, uh, when you look, when you buy the, uh, some of the yeah. toy, mm -hmm. make sure they have some safety. There is some code, I believe that MST code, if you see that that when there is some safety uh, on Options. this type of option in this term, make sure the safety option exists. And I don't know if you have anything you want uh, to say. It. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because you know this whole thing about what you're talking about, the negative side effects that are coming in the future, mm -hmm. is because there's no balance, there's no control. So now we don't want these things that are uh, created to help us. We don't want them to hurt us, so we have to set controls and set boundaries. I know a very good friend of mine, Mary, how you doing? Mary told me that if her daughter wants to be on the phone or on the iPad, she says, as mm -hmm. much as you're on the iPad, then when you're done, you have to read for the same amount of time. So if it's 30 minutes on the iPad, you know, mm -hmm. then it's 30 minutes of reading or maybe even 45 minutes of reading, you know, to make things balanced. So let these things help us, but not hurt us. Yes, and you said it, uh, the people that do research, all the professional, they are doing the work, they work for, no, for, for, for us. But what we do in industry is just educate you, mm -hmm. you know, and advise you. Mm -hmm. If you have kids, like you said, that's going to use iPad, that's using computer, that doesn't mean the kid has to have some issue in, his, in, in the eye to get them co computer protection. Mm -hmm. Make sure you, you give them some glasses that, that have blue light protection on it. Mm -hmm. And what you mentioned also about the champagne. When you're opening your champagne, guys, especially we have Christmas coming up, we have New Year's coming up, make sure you aim it away from anyone uh, you know, who's, who's attending your parties. We really want you to have a healthy and a safe holiday so that you can start the the brand new year 2020 with health and really good vision yes. right and also there is a lot going on i don't want to jump in other <laughs> subject <laughs> because i know um Jerlyn may be watching us now uh, with vision in the classroom okay. i believe even she's busy in in, in a medical schools uh, stuff like that and that's a good news for her because she's always 
concern about this issue as for female, as for women get into medical school. She was always asked this question, why so many, when you go to all hospitals, it's always men. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't even want to do a show about it. And now the good news, why it is, it's just like a, for the first time, mm -hmm. this is information that was provided by the Association of American Medical College, the AMC. A lot of students that's going to apply for medical school, for the first time, there is more female, there is more women, mm -hmm. you know, get into medical school than male. And this is good for diversity. This is good too for the, for the AM, AM, AAMC, for the organization itself, because the society, mm -hmm. you know, and because they usually, that means you see all the world is changing. The world is you know, there is a changing. lot of changing. Hopefully, we will hope, you know, all these women that get to medical school this time, because we, in the next show, we can come with more number because we're just giving you the good news. Most likely, um, but that's a, that's a good news that came out for all so the... Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. This is a new record that's been being broken, but in the years past, why do you think there were so few women in uh, the medical field? I mean, this is just your opinion. This is not a fact. <laughs> yes, opinion, yes. But I am asking you, yeah. why do you think that um, there were more men than women in this field? Well, uh, me, uh, I'm born from Haiti, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in Haiti. But, but when I was in medical school, there was, there was a lot of female, but there we, we there there was more male in my, you know, in the, uh, when I was in medical school. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ask me what the question, because, and when you see the distribution of the profession, mm -hmm. and as, that's my personal opinion, women most likely has a tendency to go for nursing. Okay. You know, and you now, before, like, it's like the same like, thing like in Haiti, mm -hmm. but now you may see more people, some of the males try to do nursing in Haiti. Mm -hmm. On my time, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, males will not go for nursing. They mm -hmm. all automatically see nursing for female. Yes. You know, now with the, with the way the world is going on, with the, all the changing, women can do everything, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Whatever men do, be, it's the, like the same thing before it was always men that go mm -hmm. to the army, stuff like that. Now women go mm -hmm. to the army too. Mm -hmm. And now I see the same thing that happened to medical school also too. And also remember the factor of the kids aspect also, because women sometimes they want to have kids early mm -hmm. and, and they want to have a family because a, going to medical school is a, is a big sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people want to become a doctor, but the, there is a lot of sacrifice mm -hmm. because even when I finish high school, I have some classmates that could go for doctors, stuff like that, but they didn't want to because it was too many times. Some of them said, why should I spend so, uh, many, years. so many years in school and stuff like that? But uh, guess what? When you finish medical school, the same people that were said that to you, they're still looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, I would say it is, is based of, you know, the country where you live in and with the world is changing. And now, the same way you can see when you go to the hospital now, most of the hospital has a lot of nurse practitioners, yes. stuff like that. And if in medical school this year for the first time there is more female, I believe the number is going to keep going up, going up, going up, you know, stuff like that. So then you think maybe that women feel more confident? M women feel like maybe doors are opening for them more now? But I will not say door, uh, door, door, for me, door were always open. Okay. It's just like, uh, that's my personal opinion. I did say that to Jerlene because she was always asked question, why medical doctor and uh, getting paid, female getting paid less than male, stuff like that. And she was, she asked a lot of questions. Hopefully she has, she, I don't want to discuss the topic of a show mm -hmm. on healthy mm -hmm. vision, stuff like that. But the, what I will say uh, about all this thing, it's just like, I feel like some of the female, maybe they don't, they will not work at night you know, because male can mm -hmm. do overnight, stuff like that. Maybe now a lot of changing, you know, some of the female may don't want to leave the kids yeah. and to go to spend night at the hospital. Sometimes they next to their husband, they have to go mm -hmm. and they have to be on call. They have to do this, they have to do that. And, and the, there is a lot of changing now, which is good, you know, which is good for diversity, which is good 
uh, for the way the war is going on now, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. That's good. But I know we may have other questions, but we have a lot of topics. In the <laughs> a lot news. of topics. <laughs> a you? lot of topics to talk about. Yeah. But just touching on that, you know, you reminded me of a few of my personal experiences. Well, when I was growing up, my mother was an emergency room nurse. And so that was a very demanding um, field. That was a very demanding career for her. Now, thank God, we had grandparents, we had aunts, we had other family members who allowed my mom to be able to go and be at work. But you know, the children weren't their parents. So every night when my mom was getting ready to go, especially when you begin a new career, whether you're male or female, I think, you know, you just have to, to do a lot of things that you may not want to do, like in terms of scheduling and things like that, choosing your hours, you may not want to. So my mother had the night shift and every night, you know, before I was going to bed, I had to say goodbye to my mom and I would cry and I'd say, mom, I don't want you to go. And so, you know, it took some years. Eventually she was able to change her um, hours and she was able to work during the day and be home with me in the evening. But is, is the, I know we have a lot of subjects to, to, to go, <laughs> but the healthy vision is providing information. Mm -hmm. I would say it is the same thing like for in the profession in, in vision rehabilitation therapies. Because when you look at it before, this profession, maybe we will have a show one day, we can try to invite one of the, one, 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 one of the specialists uh, uh, that can address the history of vision rehabilitation profession. Okay. Now, that, uh, that's a big profession now, because mm -hmm. before it used to be a profession more sacred to blind people, when I see people that lost their vision, that used to work at home, mm -hmm. you know, like nurse, it was to be a, a female profession. Mm -hmm. And now it, it was not as open. Mm -hmm. When I did, I time go every year. It's become a profession. Now that's been, is a university trained profession. You are even a graduate a program. Mm -hmm. You have to be graduate and to get to this type of program. And now, a, in this field, you go in even some of the hospitals, some of the rehab facility, and you get those vision and rehabilitation therapies work a part of the team with the doctor, with the nurse, a, mm -hmm. with the a occupational therapy. Yes. You know, there is an evolution now, and that's completely different, which is good for the patient because before when someone has a stroke or not only if the stroke affect the leg, they cannot walk, the speech, but this, this is the stroke affect the vision before even some of the place, they still doesn't think about the vision. Mm -hmm. But now there is nothing that makes me more happy when I see some of the facility from, the, from some of the hospital is looking for vision rehab specialists. Look at that. You understand? For people mm -hmm. that when their vision doesn't come back mm -hmm. because they start understanding the and the importance, the same way you get a, you need a physical therapist, a physical therapist, or you get an occupational therapy for the fine motor skill, or you get therapy. speech therapy for the speech, for the vision, if the vision doesn't come back, you don't let it go, mm. you know, stuff like that. I know we have a long way to go to educate the ophthalmologists on it, to tell them, because I have so many stroke patients that lost their vision for a while, and some of them, when they come for rehab, their vision come back. Some of them think it's just like a god. It's because there is rehab that have to do the same way, you know, because they, when you have a show, there is the blockage of the circulation somehow, okay. you know, but they, again, the blockage of the circulation is everywhere. If it affects the visual That's true. A feel, you, your vision will be affected, but if you do rehab, mm -hmm. you know, it will be the same thing. So Thinking, you, okay, yeah. you mm -hmm. may be able to clear the blockage is yes. what you're mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. and improve your sight. Well, you are actually the first person to tell me about um, vi vision rehabilitation. This is something I never knew about. <laughs> and that's another change is happening. Like you said, you know, medic medicine is becoming more advanced. But what I've noticed is that people are specializing in more specific branches of health care, of medication, um, 
and of the body, how it works, you know, like respiratory therapy and all these type of things. So that's good news. That's definitely something. Yes, that, that's to a be good proud news. Proud of. Yeah, but to be proud of, and <laughs> you know, even when I see, I don't, I, I always give example. I know you give example to your mom. I will give example as for this stroke patient. I remember when I was doing my internship, I did have a veteran, a veteran, okay. and he didn't have vision for a while because he had a stroke, but he was able to be able to get back to be functional, mm -hmm. walking, mm -hmm. speak, but the only thing that was missing is the vision. When he get to the, he, to the VA, and automatically everyone, they already sent him where they're going to because he's completely blind. They're going to give him device mm -hmm. that he's not going to use his vision that can help mm. use the, the, the other senses, like auditory stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, when he came and I look at him, I talk to him, he said to me, how he saw. And, he, um, and I know the, he, the vision specialist that was there, and he said he referred him to just to the IT people to see what they can do. I, 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 I just go and talk to the vision, to the, the vision, to the low vision specialist. I mm -hmm. said, if you give me a chance to work with him, I believe we can have some vision. Mm -hmm. And I know if I was listening to my supervisor at that time, mm -hmm. my supervisor said to me, you don't talk. Mm -hmm. and, I, and because me, I, I'm deaf to, for That's experience. The you know, stuff That's like that. That's the whole point. Yeah, and I, I, I just don't listen to, my, uh, to the supervisor. What he said to me, I go straight to the... Um, the to the No, I go to the person ahead, to, mm -hmm. the, uh, to the low vision specialist at that time, that the head of the department. I said, if you give me a chance, I can work with him. Just give me a chance to work with him. When I work with him, and first, I start doing rehab with him. When I look at a CC light, and from light, and I That's do what they call, sign. yeah, I do, and I do what they call, I look, I do what they call a scientific viewing skill. This is a skill, all low vision, a rehab specialists, all low vision specialists know about it, all the ophthalmologists know about it, but for people that doesn't have the knowledge, it's called sweet spot. When I try to do a different assessment for him, I saw he, I saw he can identify, when I put zero, he said to me, I saw something, a, but he a, a looked like I saw one. When I give him L, he told me I. I said, that's good. That's an improvement. That's and feedback. Yes, that's when we start working. You know, in less than three days, these guys was able to give me all the alphabet. Wow. And we didn't number. And I go back to the vision, a low vision specialist. I said to him, he has some vision. And now he put him back in the low vision. Wow. He said, okay, put him back in the low vision. They were able to give this guy some glasses mm. and give him CCTV mm. to be able to practice at home. Because this is one of the things, what I'm going to say, or vision rehabilitation therapists, or vision rehabilitation specialists, or they can help, but a lot of the ophthalmologists doesn't know, mm -hmm. you know, or the help can form. Because sometimes in their mind, and they just focus a, a, on different things, or there is a lot of change you can make in some of the patients that you don't even know. So but, you, um, you never know, you never know where change can be made and where improvements can be made. Mm -hmm. So it's always worth a try. Yes. Thanks for sharing that story with us, Dr. Mm -hmm. Prince. Well, it's about time for us to take a break. We're going to take a brief pause and we'll be right back. <music> Healthy vision, <laughs> and also I'm here with Dr. Prince. Mm -hmm. So thanks again for all the information that you've been sharing with us. 
Now, we're still giving news because there's a lot of news. There are a lot of things happening um, this month in December. Mm -hmm. We just taught, touched on toy safety. Mm -hmm. We touched on um, the fact that there are a lot more women that are entering the field of medicine. Mm -hmm. There are going to be a lot more female doctors in the future. So good luck to you guys and you ladies. Good luck to everyone. Um, so with all these people that are entering the medical field, you know it's going to be very expensive. You have shared some information with me about some scholarships that are available. Yes. And um, what, when we have it, there is a lot of <clears throat> scholarship. And uh, in Healthy Vision, we, remember Healthy Vision is giving information to. Mm -hmm. We want everybody, if you didn't know about their scholarship for, we're not talking for medical school. Because, no. uh, but the scholarship is for is an, is, is that in the medical field, not yes. not for not not for just <laughs> any. You're, thank you. Yes. <laughs> not just for any medical practitioner, but this is very specific, yes. right? Yes. For mm -hmm. people who want to study about vision and eye care, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, in I believe a. Uh, I'm going to read it. There is a scholarship that worth 44,500 euro yes. for eye health master, but that's in UK. Mm -hmm. But the, the good thing about this scholarship is the scholarship is fully funded. Um, it's fully funded for, is a master in public a, a health mm -hmm. a, for which focuses in eye care. And it's open to everyone. You know, a, the only requirement they ask for you to get this one you have to be able if you are foreign you have to have, you have the uh, to be able to speak english you have to be able to have your esl mm -hmm. and taken mm -hmm. before the deadline and um well, and the and the university i know i know if you want may want to know when it's going to start the starting date will be um, in september 2020 at london school of hygiene and topical medicine and they will pay for you, I'm going to give you, is a full tuition. They even pay for your return flight. They pay for you for your living for up to 12 months. Mm -hmm. You know, summer project, project course is fully, is a scholarship fully funding for everyone. If you want, they say that well, if you want to improve eye health in your country, if you have strong, um, a strong, a, if you're really interested to make a change in the eye care, you know, this university has this information available. But there is a deadline. The deadline is, is December 18. We have a few days uh, to apply. And where to, to go to apply is common, com, Commonwealth Share Scholarship page. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess you can give more information. Yeah. Uh, you can spell it for, it for them. We want to know to let everyone, you know, if you're interested to learn more about heart health, because this scholarship is not that you're going to pay. There is a limited number of people I know they are taking. Maybe Lady Nick can tell you how many people they're going to care. I believe it's eight. Oh, yeah, yeah. there are mm -hmm. eight scholarships, and it will fund the following items in full. Tuition fee, return flight, living allowances for up to 12 months, summer project, and there's the costs for the summer project are covered and alumni workshops that are held in the UK early in the following years. So even after you graduate, there's still going to be this is continual yeah. support for you to go attend these um, workshops and these different um, conferences mm -hmm. after you graduate. I think that's a very good That's point. a very good, as you can look at, looking at our IT showing us the, um, the building of the school in UK and is a well reputed school. Yes. And um, we can see all the vision field is getting more advanced. More, because there is no, it's not, they don't do that like this, like that, because mm -hmm. there is so many things going on in the vision with all the technology that's going on now. Mm -hmm that can affect the vision mm -hmm. even but most likely in the for the developed country big country like usa but in small country like haiti mm -hmm. like jamaica like the caribbean they still have a lot of cases from other conditions like conjunctivitis 
like some basic, the isla of some basic infection, I'm talking most likely in the eye, mm -hmm. that can affect the small country. When they call up, talk about public health in the eye care, is it is most likely political aspect, or we can help people, you know, with the vision issue, it's a better program, to or to improve. focus on prevention, stuff like that. Um, that's a good news. Yes, yeah, so you can go to Common Wealth Shared Scholarships. You can look that up and then you can apply from there. There's also the MSC, Public Health for Eye Care course. That's the page that you're going to, mm -hmm. to click on and then you'll get the information there. So like Dr. Prince said, that you have to complete your application by December 18, 2019. But if you have some um, tests that you have to take for English language, mm -hmm. it's called the um, EILTS. Mm -hmm. That one, they want you to finish it preferably mm -hmm. by Before. February 2020. Okay, well, that's yes. good. Mm -hmm. this, so there's a little bit of time. If you didn't take the language test, mm -hmm. you have a little bit of time. But if you want to apply for the scholarship, you have to get on that right away because the deadline is next week. Yes, we see. We don't want to do. We give you information mm -hmm. because that's so. Uh, we don't want to say what we're going to say because some people, they get this information. They try to make it a big deal. They mm -hmm. are doing this. This information is valuable for you mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. That means we get it. We share it for you because the university sent it to us. They want us to share it on a, on a network for them. We do the, what we're supposed to do. And the thing is that you never know who um, is watching and who is really, really interested in eye care in mm -hmm. terms of the practitioner side, yeah. not mm -hmm. just from the patient side, mm -hmm. you know? So this is a great opportunity. Yes, and there is more scholarship also. There is some, so this scholar, the second scholarship we're going to talk is for people with visual, with, with visual impairment. That means people that either some all lost the vision eh, or people that completely blind. And eh, these people that lost the vision, if you have any family member that those that lost the, that lost the vision and that want that already go, went to go to school and that want to get a higher education, and the American Council for the Blind, every year I believe this year also has twenty one scholarship. That's a lot. Yeah, and then they're going to give you money. Mm -hmm. It's from one thousand to seven point seven thousand five hundred. US dollar they can they, they will give you to support you you know a for but there is a deadline too mm -hmm. um, um like it's the, is it the no. Mm, no the deadline the, the, the for for the for the scholarship I was thinking you have it for mm -hmm. the scholarship for a that American Council for the blind has you know the they're going to start we we, we give you this information early mm -hmm. but the the beginning will be a, when you can apply is is on february 2020 all right yeah february 2020. now you can see we're showing some of some of the picture is for people a, that lost the vision now we get a lot of people that lost the vision and that been successful and as in the, in the french show yesterday we talk about nadine that have the same name like you the okay. first Asian that become a lawyer, you know, in, in Brazil. Okay. She graduated, she completely blind, which okay. was good, that's her. You know, and she, there is nothing that's more meaningful, but she is not the first one. She may, may be the first Asian we know, mm -hmm. but there is more than, more, more people that lost their vision, that completely blind, that accomplish a lot. If you look at a, even a China, uh, with uh, President Barack Obama, but she went to Harvard University and okay. she graduated, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. And uh, we, and I know, uh, I remember um, doing my time at Vision, there is so many young kids, uh, we see that want to become, a, be, be, to become a priest, that want to have so many aspirations, but thanks God, there is some organization that's willing to support them. Thanks God, you know, when, you, when we talk about that organization, organization like Commission for the Blind, and, but they have some counselor. Those counselor, when you have kids that have goal, the only thing what we're doing now is give you information. Because if you have a chance, you have a kid that wants to go to school, 
you have, if you have a counselor, you have to sit down and lay out the goal for the kid and try to get the maximum for the kid. Don't focus, think the kid is, a, is disabled or the kid doesn't have vision, mm -hmm. that's enough, any little bit, it's okay. Mm -hmm. No, because losing, doesn't have your vision doesn't mean anything. And it doesn't mean <laughs> that you think less or you that or that you understand less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, your vision does not affect your intellect. No. What do you think? No, no. Ne specifically, because in the subject today we're going to talk, and I know we can interject a, from time to time, mm -hmm. will be a, the, visual, a, the visually impaired a, kids in, in school. Educating but the, the visually impaired. impaired in school. Now, when you lost your vision, there is a big evolution in the, as for education, education for people who, are, who is completely blind or for people who are partially sighted. There is a big, uh, compared to in the past, where you, just, these people used to get, have a, go to special school, you know, stuff like that. These days, and they're more involved in the same school like people that have vision. Mm -hmm. And it's always good specifically for kids because the interaction with people, it's good both sides. Let the kids uh, that visually impaired, that lost the vision, interact with kids with, with, that have vision. Mm -hmm. Is good for both of them, even kids that have vision to understand. Yes, you know they, they can learn, from each, learn from each other, and even for kids that lost vision to be together with other kids that have, have lost vision, they can share the experience, do some form of competition between each other at the same scale. Now, um, remember you're going to talk about the topic is as for the teacher, you know, who going to teach these kids, you know, oh. and if they well educated you know, stuff like that. But in the United States, even there is a, a lot of to do, but we know most of the school district, they have the teacher of vision impairment and stuff like that. Now, this field still need a lot of people to go to this field for these people because we still see a lot of school that still, that have teacher that doesn't even know how to deal with someone at least a, that has some lead, a little bit of vision. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, a, it's not like a, sometimes they just don't know mm -hmm. if they just don't know or to deal with them even if you I see that very often even recently I was at the hospital um, some of the I don't want to say the name of the hospital the patient a, a, that a, that lost it she 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 was maybe most likely legally blind mm -hmm. I will not say completely blind but she has a can she's coming when as soon as she's coming the way the approach of even the nurse in the front desk is already put a stigma. Wow. You understand? When I say put a stigma, losing your vision doesn't mean mm -hmm. you, um, you depend on everybody. The lady was walking and with a can and there was a, try to look her one, a way out mm -hmm. and try to figure out where she's going, where she's going. Mm -hmm. And automatically they think she needs this, she needs this, she needs this. And they don't even communicate with her. That's why what I would say uh, to even when to give her to fill out the application. When you go to hospital, you get someone that visually impaired. And as I'm said, where well, you see, I take you one example. I can mm -hmm. take example one of my patient. Mm -hmm. She said she is blind. She is legally blind. Mm -hmm. They put the sign on it and this. And when they when stuck for her to sign, they don't even have so the. They don't even have, even have the form of communication she used okay. because you most likely she used well okay. when she's writing. They, they, they just try to bring her stuff and try to take her finger and try to put it on it because okay. this is what we are fighting as far. Like the same place if someone comes to the presenter, you know, we have different form of communication. If you talk, if, if, you, if you're completely blind, we offer you a a slit and stylus, you know, some form of communication if you use well or whatever form of communication. We want that when we said equal opportunity for everyone, we want all facility. It's not like only the hotel or some of the restaurant to have that form of communication. So let me ask you, out of curiosity, someone who is in that situation, you know, their vision is partial or it's completely gone, what would be the proper protocol, how would you approach that person? Well, the, the, uh, the proper protocol will be first time, if you, 
if you have an idea of the health situation of the person, mm -hmm. because we're talking about uh, education, most likely mm -hmm. uh, you should. If, if the person is completely blind, uh, it's best if you, have an, if, if you know a little bit information about this person, because if mm -hmm. this person born Blind. blind of this person has vision and lost it it well uh, yes. uh, now if the person did have vision before the person may remember a few stuff you okay. can start in related to that to that aspect right. if a person is completely back you know which way to go but if you don't know the person at all you have to communicate with the person so the good morning protocol is to first speak to the person. person like a normal person okay you know like a normal person not like a, a someone that needs someone to do everything for them this is not what it is and you shouldn't start <laughs> speaking loudly or yelling at the person no 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 uh, and you should not that, you should not think too even because the person is looking at you and if the person can see you now and you give the person something the person cannot feel it the person doesn't see you can the person is faking mm -hmm. or, or this is mm -hmm. not you have to try to understand the person but you have to communicate with the person and let's say if the if you go into to a room with the person you can say you have a we go in a to the a, if you can walk two or three miles to your left to your right okay. there is a room and you can mm -hmm. communicate with the person and now we can ask the person when i understand you a, you you completely blind or you, you lost your vision but the which way you want to sign this paper okay you understand That's and which way question. or which way you used to sign your paper okay. is there any specific way you used to do this thing mm -hmm. you know if the person has some of them may have a signature guide they will say to you yes i can sign and you bring the, the, the paper you will see they go to the pocket and take their signature guide what you is understand? the signature guide well, the, we can, the signature guide, I have a bunch of them in the low vision room now. Is and, it like a stamp or something? Well, the, some patient has a stamp, but it's not a stamp. A okay. signature guide is a, is a, inside a little cot, mm -hmm. you know, that have a, a weak, weak a, that have a little hole inside. The person, space. space, the person just put it, the person can sign in the middle of it. Okay. Put the finger, stuff like that. There you go. And a, we give one to all patients, to, to, to all our Mm -hmm. patient aid that doesn't see well mm -hmm. you know during their first visit i'm and sure that that's very if helpful. they need it yeah it mm -hmm. gives them like a specific area yeah where they'll know that they'll write mm -hmm. and then they won't be all over the place but you know all asian community <laughs> mm. i guess if they use it two or three times after that they say they don't need it well maybe because you know they be so effective you know because they be able to just use their finger and oh, put their okay. finger and do it. This is a different way also. Yes. You know, but uh, we want, uh, as we do in the show, uh, because this week, again, was a human right also, too. Mm. It, uh, there was a lot of That's uh, stuff. very important. It, it, that was a lot going on. What we want, what we do in this show, we want everyone to know is uh, communicate, uh, try to learn. We will, we will, it will be good if most of, a lot of business a lot of facility as we as we when you fill an application you see, you heard they said equal opportunity for everyone yeah. stuff like that if it's the case and all the supervisor or the manager they should have a training they should at least get professional from the vision rehabilitation a uh, field mm -hmm. to teach them or to do seminar for them or to deal with people that uh, uh, that lost their vision mm -hmm. you know to, or to because I'm, I witness a lot because I remember when I used to be with vision, they used to send me an assisted living facility which to see some of the patients. Sometimes you see the Humel fade or the CNA, they're, they're yelling at the, at the person, oh, they, you know, stuff like that. It's because they don't know. It's not like they think the person is faking, but mm -hmm. that's unfortunate. But they, but they don't know the person does they see. Well, they lack understanding and comprehension and empathy. Yeah. And mm -hmm. empathy is the ability to step out of yourself and say, let me put myself mm -hmm. in this person's shoe. Let me consider what this person is going through. How would I feel if I were in that situation? You know, the golden rule is very important. I mean, I know people have a lot of, pressure and they have a lot of stress on their jobs so they're probably thinking my boss is watching me 
or I have so many patients to see within an hour, you know, I have 20 people that I have to help. Everybody's calling me and pulling me this way and that way. But that's where you as the um, healthcare professional or the caregiver, when you step away from your work, you really need to have some calming practices, some practices to de-stress and to neutralize your feelings that will get you back in balance so that when you go back to work, you can have some compassion and some understanding for the people and for the community that you're serving. But what you said, if you, if they put what, if all these good things Ladine said, if you put them in application, compassion, understanding, related to the patient, empathy, all these good words, your job will be more easy. That's true. Because it will not be a challenge for you. The person, you will feel related to you. And I'm talking to all the doctors too. Oh. The person will give you more information. The person will not be afraid to tell you what's going on. They will cooperate yes, with, you. with you more easy and your treatment will be better. Now, because this understanding doesn't come out with the person just come in, you just put them, the person in a, in a, in a machine equipment, glaucoma, this, this, and after that surgery, you go home, sit down, mm -hmm. take a few minutes, and let pa the patient communicate with you. Because this morning I have a patient coming in, and he said to me, I see well, or oh, yesterday I didn't have any problem, when I wake up this morning, I'm, I don't see. Mm. And mm. first thing, when I'm, when I'm looking in, all my eyes all red. That's a scary feeling. Yeah, but the, you have to show the, per the person, you understand the pain he's going to. Mm. First thing I try to, a guy that I used to read up all, all the letter all the way down mm -hmm. up to 2040 mm -hmm. and even 2025 last week. And today you cannot see even 20, 20, over 200. It's like he's even le worse than, than legally blind. Oh, that's a shock. And I'm standing, he said to me, I'm showing him big low vision number. He said to me, I look like if I see a face. Wow. And I, you know, some, and his kids was there, his kids think he's faking. The kids said, well, why you be able to drive? And now you said you don't see. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. and I, I said to the kids, if you, if you, can you step outside? And you have to show a part, sit down, and understand what happened. Mm -hmm. And he'd be able to explain to me because he just using a, a ointment last night. You know, that's make his eye blurry. You understand? But you did you would not have chance to he said to me, maybe they put too much in my eye. They they do this, they do this, they do this, they do this, they do that. Because this is the stuff. Before he left, he was able to see because and when he get home he called, he said to me, he'd be able to see. Even he did give a we see here. And now he didn't even see what they showed him. He said to he called back and said, <laughs> When I get home, I see what I, when I get shot, stuff like that. Which is good because you have to be able, because you get, you imagine this patient come to you, you just go in the machine, not even talk to the patient. No. You're going to start talking because communication, understanding the patient is very good. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not only what we have to talk because there is more news to come. I don't know. If, um, there is some more news. There is some more news. So we're going to take a very short break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Mm -hmm. Société, politique, économie, santé, environnement, géopolitique, un franc parler avec Ronald Léon chaque mardi 7h, 8h pm sur le PCVI Network. Ronald Léon Show, le, le show le plus chaud du web. Suivez-nous sur notre page Facebook, la chaîne YouTube et le site d'Internet de PCVI Network. Enfin, sur la page Facebook de Ronald Léon Show. I'm your host for the evening, Lady Nay, and I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Prince. <laughs> so we've been sharing a lot of good information, a lot of news 
I, I, I think that, you know, we've been in the news <laughs> for a good 30 minutes now, but that's because there's a lot of good news yes. to share. Mm -hmm. And so now there is good news in terms of money, 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 and wages, and what people with disabilities have been earning. Can you share some more of that information with oh, us? Oh, yeah. Uh, I get recently, uh, most likely Friday, if, if Friday, not Friday, tomorrow, Friday. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason we're talking about the wage, the wage discrimination, there will always there been wage discrimination for people with, with disability. Okay. It's not, when we say disability, it's not only for people with vision loss. Mm -hmm. You know, people that have a, um, a autism, a yeah, on autism, wheelchair, <laughs> or Down syndrome, and all kinds of disease. As you can see, these people, a, a lot of them went to work. It's some special agency, it use, you, it hire them, and they work. But these people in some of the state, they don't even give them minimum wage. Wow. And now, and one the story that was so so bad. It's like one of the big agency that called the Goodwill, you know, that I more, more admire. of them. It's yeah. a very well respected agency. Yeah. And the, this industry been paying them less than minimum wage. Wow. And while the CEO, you know, in 2015, mm -hmm. and uh, I get James Gibson, Gibbs, mm -hmm. who is black. James Gibson. Yeah, he who is blind himself. Mm -hmm. You know, he make more than seven hundred, seven hundred thousand twelve, in addition with additional compensation. While his disabled employer is making nine dollar an hour wow. in some state. Now there is no better news. Um, last week, when it's come out, when some state like Alaska is taking a head off and said make it like a law. No one should pay people with disability less than minimum wage. If anything, people with disability, they need, they need just as much financial stability as anyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They may need more. They may have to pay a caretaker or a caregiver to do things for them to do services for them, probably go run errands, go to the store, or prepare meals for them. So I think it's very sad that a, a blind would be robbing from a blind. Well, I will, not, I will not say robbing because he- Taking he, advantage? Yeah, well, well, we can say, he's, we will say it's not fair, mm -hmm. but he, he defended himself in 2015. What, what did we, he say? What he said, he said the, the issue is just filling in, <laughs> like a CEO, you understand? It's oh. just a feeling in is be able to get the position, is be able to get the opportunity. Uh -huh. Now, that this the Goodwill Company is a 5.5 billion dollar industry a, a year wow. from, is, as a non for profit a company. Wow. They make they get the contract. Wow. You see, they get the contract. They, I believe a lot of people believe they will be, they should be able to pay their their employee properly. Now. And I will go to the positive aspect because I don't want to say when you say the way you say it is someone who is blind, eh, that doesn't mean there is no different a CEO who, who completely buy and a CEO who have to, to, to eye. You understand? Yeah, but you would expect that the person has more understanding. Just like, you know, for me, we were talking about medical students be, being more so like um, women increasing in that field. I think I would feel comfortable with certain aspects of my health with talking to a woman because I would think she would understand me. You understand? Okay, but he, he, someone with, who has lost the vision or who well, we born different. blind, or we born blind, mm -hmm. this ego, they don't take the thing different like you. Mm -hmm. The same way we see you have your vision and I do have mine also, mm -hmm. but we're talking about what's fair. Mm -hmm. And I'll go to the field it, it, and learn how to deal with people with vision loss. And, it, but I've, this is not something that's, that makes me more happy than working with them. Okay. Now, okay. 
And so it's your but passion. The, yeah, my passion, but the, the passion I have, I don't expect to someone who doesn't have vision to have the same passion. Oh, I understand. You understand? That, that because we we just have to just don't don't I'm trying to don't even think because he may get the position in that organization because of his disability, mm -hmm. but I don't expect him to have the same thinking like if he doesn't have the passion, okay. the passion because he's thinking like a businessman, like a CEO that won't win in an organization, stuff like that, and that's why to make more profit and try to get bonus. What you like, like, like other people do. So he's not thinking like a doctor <laughs> who wants to improve the vision of his patient. Yeah. He's thinking like um, a millionaire who wants to increase his money and he doesn't care how his money is going to increase, whether he's taking it from people who can see or people who, can bl who are blind. He just wants his uh, profit margin to be high. Well, I don't know if he's a millionaire because me... A, I've been a CEO, I was a CEO of a for-profit organization, okay. Express Self. Mm -hmm. And when you're a CEO of an organization, if it's a corporation, you have a, a, you have, you have a, you have a, you have a management team. You, you have a team, you, you may have the, you may not be even your CEO, you may not be the, the president of the organization. You may have a team that oversee you. Mm -hmm. Your role as a CEO is is to not only oversee, is make the the vision of the organization is make it applic applicable because he is a CEO of a company. He has to sustain the company. Mm -hmm. He has to make the company make profit. Mm -hmm. If you take it as a CEO standpoint, mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, of course, if you work hard, that. He can, if all CEO get bonus, how many CEO of any company from Wall Street that making million? Mm -hmm. You understand? Now he might be surprised because the fact, because he, he, this is the first time you heard someone that was the vision is making over say, close to eight hundred thousand a year. Mm -hmm. You understand? Usually yeah. he's orthopedic that's surgeon. Not that is just orthopedic surgeon. Maybe mm -hmm. I will not say that's not common. Maybe a, in your environment. <laughs> From what I'm hearing, like I haven't really heard of that. Yeah, you know? be, yes, because uh, they, but the what I, that's one of the reasons we 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 are making a, the show to educate a lot of people because when you lost your vision, that doesn't mean uh, that doesn't mean you cannot if uh, you cannot think like anyone else. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you cannot manage a company because the company is managed is five point five billion dollar company. You know, you put, can put someone that have two eyes and the company go, go shut down. <laughs> you understand? I'm just, I'm just explaining. <laughs> I'm, see, I'm seeing him as a position as a where he is, as a businessman. Yeah. Now, as a businessman also, you have to do what's right. That That's doesn't right. mean what he, what, what he does is right. Now, that doesn't mean even if they, let us say, he's a non-for-profit organization he has. I believe he has a board. I'm just explaining. He's, he's, he has a board. So and there the, are other members that make decisions on Yes, that and he has, because they just hire him as a CEO. Mm -hmm. The board give him the vision, the philosophy of the company to make it applicable. Execute it. To execute it. Mm -hmm. Because this is what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are not in business, you will not understand his position. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if he go, he may decide if this is, is not right for for people that work for me, I may do decide to step down. He may decide to bring it to the, to the board of the organization. Mm -hmm. The board of the organization may say, if you cannot do it, I will replace you by someone else. He may try to save his job. Mm -hmm. Now, it's up to the whole company. Like you see in the Prince Center for the Visual Impair, we have a board of philosophy is to enhance the quality life of people mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't have vision. But unfortunately, the community where we are the people doesn't have money. Mm -hmm. You understand? And for the little help, for what we've been doing for a lot of people in our community, mm -hmm. if the whole community just understand, focus on human resources, focus on helping each other, mm -hmm. you know, Prince Center will be a mm -hmm. far away because you see, in December, we, we have so many patients that just need a bite, just in about a... a a binocular telescope just to get bioptic to be able to watch TV. Mm -hmm. We cannot give them that. Mm -hmm. 
And we've been asking. Mm. You know, some people just looking at, they may, in their mind, the philosophy is not there. Okay. Because we have to educate, because a lot of people, you know, a, you have to, you know, a, to be able yeah. to help. Yes. Yeah. And, and the thing is that when you help a nonprofit organization, you do have certain tax benefits that will come back to you too. So these are the things that you have to keep in, in mind. I know that, you know, I heard something recently that the average American doesn't have a savings account or doesn't have anything in savings. So things are a little bit difficult for everyone. But when you kind of weigh, your, weigh things, your expenses, and you say, okay, this thing that I'm doing, is this very necessary? Is it for entertainment? Is it for fun? Do I need it? Whatever. You'll be able to manage your money well. But we are talking about wage, <laughs> <laughs> more wage equality for people with mm -hmm. disabilities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Dr. Prince, thank you so much for helping us to see see things from a CEO, from a businessman <laughs> standpoint, and also from a doctor's standpoint who wants to see his patient's vision improve. So whether you have sight or you don't have any sight, we definitely want you to have more compassion and understanding for those who are not of the same path of you. They don't have the same experience or the same situation as you, but we do want you to have um, more understanding and definitely to have a healthy vision. So with that being said, we're going to end the show. I think well, I we guess talked about... We, we still have one more news to give. More news? Yeah. Oh my um, goodness. Um, and we cannot end this show so quick. You have two important news. One from New York State Department of Health. The other one is to advise everyone, because I know a lot of you may want to apply for health insurance. Maybe you can take a break before we go. We'll, so bye -bye. then we'll take mm -hmm. a break and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Je donne des vacances à mon cœur, un peu de repos. Et si tu crois que j'ai tort, attends. Respire un peu le souffle d'or qui me pousse en avant. Et, et comme si j'avais pris la mer, j'ai sorti la grande voie. Et j'ai glissé sous le vent Et comme si je quittais la terre J'ai trouvé mon étoile Je l'ai suivi un instant Et si tu crois que c'est fini Jamais C'est juste une pause en répit Si tu crois que je t'oublie de coup, ouvre ton corps au vent de la nuit, ferme les yeux, et fais comme si j'avais plus la main. Je sors du la grand-voie, j'ai glissé sous le vent. Comme si je quittais la fête, j'ai trouvé mon étoile, je suis vie. Healthy Vision on the PCVI Network. I'm your lady, Lady Nay, and you watch 
teaching healthy vision. And before the break, the good doctor reminded me of a few uh, things that we really need to touch on before we conclude the show. Yeah. So help us to remember this thing about conjunctive itis. Yes, uh, there being uh, the reason we have to talk about it because uh, there is a virus outside because we, we see, most likely I would say it in New York State because there is so many people uh, when they wake up for some reason or, for, uh, or, or not, they wake up their eyes all red mm -hmm. or their eyes itching them or they have secretion. Some of them even say they have bloody secretion, stuff like that coming oh, out. Some of them from the eye? From the eye. And uh, both leaders uh, is, is swelling, uh, stuff like that. And okay. this is a, but it can be, that's what we call the pink eye. I was going to ask yes. you that. Yes, that's what we call the pink eye. But it can be conjunctive with bacteria. It may be related with bacteria. It may be related with virus. It may be allergic also too. So you're saying that conjunctivitis is pink eye, but if there could be different reasons why yeah, yes. you're having those symptoms, so you really want to know exactly why you're having all that redness and discharge, itching and burning in the eye. Okay, that's yes. And that's why we have this picture to show you. As you can see in this picture, we have a, in... In the left side, you will see one eye that's completely clear. This is a normal eye. Mm -hmm. And you can see, you will have time to watch this picture. And when you watch the show, because the show is going to be on YouTube. And uh, even if you watch it on in, in channel 115, between 1 to 3 on Friday. But you can, you will be on All Smart TV too. Mm -hmm. Or you will be uh, on, uh, on Facebook too. As you can see, all the different, I want you to give you the basic. If your eye... All different picture, they have the indication. In the first picture, if you see you have redness in your eye, itching, and the secretion is white, there is a clear secretion, mm -hmm. most likely, is not related to bacteria. You okay. may, you, but anyhow, you have to see your eye doctor, mm -hmm. or you can see your primary doctor. If you see your primary doctor, if, if it's necessary, he will send you to your eye doctor. Or if you don't have either one, you go to ER. And if it's necessary, he will send you to eye doctor. One thing I want to let you know, I have patients that go to ER, ER doesn't give them nothing, he send them home. They said, what, they didn't give me nothing? Mm -hmm. Because you don't need nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> because right. because if, you, if you just have a re allergic reaction, you know, the only thing they can, can give you is anti antihistamine, you know, stuff like oh, that. Antihistamine. Histamine, yeah. And so I was wondering, is it, is certain, cases of conjunctivitis is it just a matter of getting clear eyes or maybe just washing your eye out and then it will clear up no if you have allergic with something mm -hmm. it, it is good if you get it that's why we talk about anti anti stamina mm -hmm. you know a eye jobs mm -hmm. you know the doctor some of them are prescribed some of them are over the counter you have to know which one to pick that's why i'm talking to you to see an eye care professional that can help you. Now, if you go any hour, one point you said, you have to make sure you clean your eye because most of the conjunctivite, the, 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 where you get them is from end to eye contact, mm -hmm. from touching stuff and from the secretion you're touching from this eye to the eye mm -hmm. and you're going to touch your kids you're going, or you're going to touch your wife, you mm -hmm. give the, uh, you the spread infection, the you, spread, you spread the virus to them. Now. And if you, we talk about the allergic aspect, you know, don't remember, we, we, you can put cold warm compress on top of the eye also. Mm -hmm. But if you see a, both your lid is swelling mm -hmm. and you have purulent secretion coming out is bacteria. You need antibiotic at that time. Oh. Now you need to see your eye care specialist that can prescribe you which one to get. Mm -hmm. Don't try to treat yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff there is complication. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see um, as you look in your eyes swelling and the secretion coming out or is bloody secretion, you need to see your eye care specialist. That is a very you know, serious condition. Well, all of them is pretty simple if you see an eye care specialist. Okay. You understand? But if you try to manage it yourself, you don't have to be crazy because most of the patients I have, they come, when they come to me, the eyes already infected because they, they wait eight weeks. Wow. They, not eight weeks, I'm sorry, they, eight, eight, days, hours, eight days, eight days, you know, they try to manage it themselves, mm -hmm. you understand? 
And you know, try, you're supposed to at least go to your primary doctor. He will be able to help you instead of you try, you try yourself and, and, and do things. But this is a, what we have for you as for this. It's a basic information. Now, make sure for prevention aspect, clean your hand, wash your hand. Mm -hmm. And the, um, a, if you have it, try to, you don't have to stay away with your husband. Make sure it's clean. You use the proper thing to clean your eye and stuff like that uh, that's a preventive technique and uh, if you have if you follow all the rules you wash your hands you take the medication can you give maybe like a range of a time frame of how long it will take for your uh, eye to clear up well a, a conjunctive eye it, it, for some people no well to be honest with you when the, most of you that have conjunctive eye it, to clear up, me might be take you between a four, one, or even some people even two weeks. Okay. Okay. If some people even three days be with treatment, mm -hmm. you understand with treatment. So when you range. nail it, I have patient in in two days, it's out because you will nail it in the first place. Okay. Uh, because as soon you as they see, the first as soon as it's so it's coming because they, these are people that only have their family member has it. Okay. That's why they just you just nail it. They acted quickly. Quickly and stuff like that. But the any 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 out oh, this is the we give you the basic information. There is more cause related to to this conjunctivitis. We just give you some basic thing. You know you need to address it. Don't get crazy. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that, and uh, we don't want anything happen to you. Stuff like that. If you, even if you have it, if you have glaucoma medicine you're taking, you still have to continue to take your glaucoma medicine. So you still follow your protocol, mm -hmm. but still address the issue. You know, I think this is something that we will re revisit in mm -hmm. the future: conjunctive itis, because mm -hmm. you know we do want to know a lot more about the different causes and the treatment options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now there's one more deadline that we need to tell everybody about because one of the reasons why people don't want to go to the doctor or the emergency room or seek medical attention is because they do not have proper health insurance so right now we have the enrollment period for health care insurance and this is something that's very important for you to take care of and make sure that you're enrolling. There's so many different plans that are available these days. And, you know, take your time, read them through, read through them, and choose the best medical plan that is right for you. Because this deadline is coming up Sunday, December 15th, 2019. And you really need to make sure that you give special attention to this matter if you do not have proper health insurance. You can go to healthcare.gov, H-E-A-L-T-H-C-A-R-E dot gov. And guys, please make sure that you take advantage of this opportunity during this enrollment period because when it's gone, it's, it's gone. And you really want to start the brand new year, 2020, with a peace of mind, with more rest, with more ease, knowing that, God forbid, if anything happens to you, um, you know, throughout the course of your day, that you can seek medical attention, right? Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. I guess he, I know he, mm -hmm. <laughs> you laugh, you laughing. I guess he, Lady Lady said it all. Remember, if you don't have insurance, this is, this is the Sunday, the last day to apply, unless, uh, unless you have a, speci a special enrollment uh, period, like for your job, stuff like that. Yes. Just make sure you go get it. Or and a change of status, maybe if you have a baby or if you just get married. Outside of that period, I think there are some si certain situations where they're willing to accommodate you on your job, if your job offers you um, health care. But... Um, I guess no. uh, this is all we have. I guess uh, now is the time for the testimony. I don't think we're coming back yeah. unless you're coming back yourself. Not for the <laughs> evening. Yeah, but uh, I guess <laughs> let, let, uh, let, the, let the friend hear from, from a testimony from 
one of our or some of our patients. Because what we've been doing in Percenter, instead of getting a review on paper for Percenter, we get the patient talk. Okay, you know, you and go. they decide sometimes they want to be part of the network. They watch the network. They said, "I want to, I want to share my experience." Yeah, we we'll let them go. I guess. Well, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. that, I think that's something that we definitely want to hear. So as we say good night and goodbye, we're going to leave you with some very grateful and appreciative patients of Dr. Prince, and they're going to share with you their own personal story. And I think that's a good thing because that's not something that they have to do, but it's something that they want to do. And so I think that this um, situation where they're sharing their story, it will be able to help some of our viewers. So I thank um, your patients in advance. I thank the viewers in advance. I thank the healthcare professionals and for everyone watching, um, enjoy the rest of your evening and we're going to leave you with a testimonial. Mm -hmm. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Marie Farrell. I'm a LPN, I'm working as an LPN and I'm a student for RN, almost finished. Um, I'm here today just to let you guys know that um, I come to Prince Center for a visually impaired. I came here once, um, I don't remember the, the month that I came, but when I came here and I'm to speak to Dr. Prince about my eyes, I was having some issues. Yeah, I couldn't see when I'm driving, it was like glare, there's a lot of glares, and um, especially when I'm in front of a computer so at work. So when I came here, I wasn't too sure about what I was, what the outcome was gonna be. So when Dr. Prince saw me and then give me all the medications and then do all the tests, and then I really, really, really appreciate him for that ever since then, with all the, um, with the things that he did for me, for my eyes or, or whatever he prescribed me, really helped. And then the time he, he took to um, really, um, do the test, and then he's very, very, very um, knowledgeable about what he's doing as well. So after that, after a few months, being with Dr. Um, Prince, checking my eyes, and then it's, it comes out so perfect. Now I can sit in front of a computer, I don't really need my glasses. But I do need them in a way just to make sure this is how um, he's helping my eyes to um, come and, um, how can I put that? Open my eyes with the medication that he put on my glasses, because he did put something in my glasses that I can really see with them and then that can help the eyes like um, get better. So I really got better and then I really, really, really um, suggest that people who has problem with their eyes and then try to give him a, come here and see what he can do for you, how he can help you, especially people who's diabetic. He specialized on that. So I really appreciate him, and then the outcome was perfect. I can stay with all my glasses. The driving is better now. So um, that's, that was my experience from the time that I've been coming here to see at Prince um, Visually Impaired, Prince Center Visually Impaired since I've been coming here. So that's my well, thanks to you guys to let you know how it happens and then what the outcome was. So I thank you guys all for this. So I know it's the end of the year, so we all need to check our eyes and then the new year's coming, it's either the end of the year or the beginning of the year. So we all can come here and then see if we can you know, check our eyes when it's time for you guys, when it's due for you guys to check your eyes. It's a good place to come and then everything is, I'm not saying perfect, everything is very good here. With Dr. Prince, you guys, you know, good to go. I thank you guys for watching this. Thank you, that was my experience. Thank you. Today, I want to say a few things about the, the center as far as contribution. Myself, I, when, I, when I came, my vision was better. But as I'm getting older, the vision is getting worse, 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 worse. Now, I end up having low vision. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm here 
at the Low Vision Center. What I want to emphasize for everybody to know, what can we do for the center as far as contribution? This is the end of the year. A lot of people is going to file taxes. Most of us has to return money to IRS. One thing people they don't know, if they contribute, whatever they contribute in, 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 in a non-profit organization, they can deduct it from their taxes. And Prince Center is one of the place that if you donate anything at the center, at the end of the year, you can deduct that money from your income tax. So I encourage everybody who, who, who listen who, to me now to contribute something, to do something, if they could, to facilitate the center, to help those who are less fortunate, who cannot afford to pay the doctor, to do certain things at the center. So those people can benefit. I encourage everybody who, who, who looking at me now to contribute something to help the center. Thank you. Did you want to learn more about how vision affects our daily lives? Well, this is a great segment for you because that includes vision in the classroom, women in medicine, and careers for the visually impaired and much more. Each week, you can be fascinated by topics that include and branch beyond medicine, provided by the PCVI Network. Tune in on Sundays at 3 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. You can also search PCVI Network and the channel will appear on the search. New and exciting episodes hosted by Jolene Aristide will be posted weekly. You won't want to miss this. Trust me, we'll see you then.